welcoming you back to the desk of Cadicorus. Join us as we partake into a new installment of Current Quickies. Ah, hello my duckies, and this time we'll be having a look at Unravel on PS4. I'm excited. Phew. This game is really damn good. I would make some sort of intro at this point before talking about the game itself, but honestly I knew nothing about this whatsoever. It looked cute and I decided to buy it, so there. And how was it? Well, I'll tell ya. I'll say it again, this game is cute. So cute, my god it's cute. But luckily that's not the only thing it has going for it. Unravel is a physics-based puzzle platformer, kind of like Limbo, I suppose. Except this time you can solve many of the puzzles and obstacles however you feel more comfortable with because of the added freedom with your moveset and how more skill-based they can be with the fact that you can lasso and pull yourself around on your own piece of yarn. The presentation, man, the visuals, the visuals are wonderful. I can only describe them as breathtaking and timeless. This will not age as far as I'm concerned. And the contrast each stage has with its themes and the story and the literal environment is very diverse and very memorable. I've gotta say, I continue playing this game just to see what more beautiful scenes the game could throw at me. And the music, oh my god, it's one of the absolute best soundtracks I've heard for a long time and it works in tangent with the visuals to create works of art. The details as well, not just in the stages, but Yanni himself, the main character, is really layered. And the way he becomes an adorable and lovable character, not just from his appearance, but the way his eye expressions and physical interactions work with the environment at his own accord added that extra layer of identity that turned this random thing made from Yarn into a very sweet protagonist. It was nice to see how the puzzles also didn't rely on the method of stay stuck on this bit until you pass it, like Limbo does for instance. So some puzzles are like that, yes, but some involve a solution that is off screen and needs to be explored to first and carried back in order to make it easier, or the answer could be further back where a little clue might come in handy for what you need to do later. And the secrets, amazingly enough, are secret. secrets. Secrets in a platform are done spot on. They're never in a place on screen visibly blocked by an obviously harder puzzle or anything like that. They're often completely off the given path and sometimes even require that you solve a main progression puzzle in a totally different way in order to reach them. Love that. It's just a shame that you don't get much of your efforts in doing that, honestly. And it's also kind of a shame how the physics in this game aren't too spectacular. I mean, they're fine, they work okay, but for Yarny himself, it's all a little bit too rock solid. For a bit of yarn, you never feel like a bit of yarn whenever you jump or swing around. You plummet to the floor like a sack of potatoes, and when swinging from one grapple to the next, it can get a little wonky since you don't really carry any momentum or flow. The game gives you the impression sometimes that it's a fast paced platformer because of this, but it really isn't. It's best enjoyed if you take it slowly. Not need to make sure that you don't screw up because some sections don't have insta-death failures that transport you back to the last checkpoint as a way to make you take everything carelessly and in a fast-paced trial and error way, instead forcing you to live with your mistakes by moving yourself and climbing all the way back to the beginning to try again. Yes, it's a little annoying, but I can actually appreciate game design like this that actually gives you proper punishment for not playing the game properly, but also to appreciate the effort gone into the atmosphere. There's buckets of atmosphere in this game and it's glorious, and also filled with many surprises, not only gameplay-wise, with random little sudden threats that don't appear at all until you reach the halfway point, but also with its dynamic musical changes and how some cadences give you the impression a peaceful loop or a peep, but instead orchestrally stab you to match the situation on screen. It's lovely how the game also gets gradually harder in a totally fair way by teaching you how to use your only tool, the yarn on you itself, effectively, getting you to figure out not only how to solve the puzzles with the correct lassoing and climbing back up the same yarn dragon behind you, but also doing all of that in the most efficient way possible by not letting the yarn ball you're connected to run out and stop you from moving any farther. By the end of the game, you're solving the challenges while doing it using as less yarn as possible, depending on where it's coming from and where it's attached to on the same screen, and I found it very clever, which then makes it slightly disappointing as you never really do anything majorly different from the start to the end, and a lot of the gorgeous stages do feel very structurally similar because of it. This is not to discredit the ending scenes though, because in my opinion, they were fucking nailed. Here is a stage that shows Coldwood, the devs of this game pouring every inch of their heart and soul into the final stage. It's sorrowful, creepy, desolate, and very emotional. All expressed through the visuals, music, character details with how Yanni reacts with the weather and the gameplay mechanics of hanging on for dear life on the last stretch of your journey. The story I wish was a little bit more concrete and not so vague with what you're doing and why you're doing it, but there is still a very nice story going on here, and for the theme surrounding death, childhood, and memory loss, it is very deep. And the ending does feature a pleasant metaphor about love itself and what Yanni represents about it within the game. For something like this, I'm honestly surprised EA published it, but you know, it's nice to be pleasantly surprised every so often. <laughs> And so I could give this game a very safe and very good 8 out of 10. And Yanni, you're so cute I could fucking eat ya. Cute. Ay, ay, ay.